when she came here, you know, she was like isolated in her own little world. You know, she didn't have any social contact. She didn't want me to, to touch her. She, I didn't have, I was not, for the past three years of her life, I was not able to be, you know, part of her because she was something that she was not letting me. As Charlie developed, we began to realize that he was uh, not speaking as, as children his age would be expected to speak. They did everything in their power to, to help her, or to help me also, because they were very dedicated. They, they also invited me so many times for me to come to the classroom and to be engaged with them and to participate with them. We looked at a number of places in the city, but the school that we thought far and away was uh, 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 attuned to the ki kinds of needs that Charlie had was the New York Center for Child Development. We're here to change lives, to change lives of children with developmental delays and their families. That's what is most important and when we hear from families that they're more hopeful about their children, that they're more optimistic about their children, when we see progress in their children, we feel we're on the way to achieving our mission. That's what we're here for. I made the right decision because she was able to look at me for the first time and follow commands and, um, and be happy. He's really started to connect to kids um, in a very happy way. Uh, so his isolation has, has declined. And certainly within the last month, he's finally begun to speak and, and his speaking has come when, as it's begun to come, has come uh, in, in, in great leaps. With me now, it's a blessing because now we are able to communicate and she's able to go out with me. Um, we have like this, the mother and daughter relationship you know. We attribute that in large part to the work that the therapists and the teachers at uh, the New York Center have, have invested in him. Um, it's really been remarkable. Of course it's focused on the children and the families, that's its main reason for being, but it really has a much broader scope than that and a much broader vision than that. Um, it pretty much stands at the crossroads really between service delivery, the academic community, and the research community. I think the commitment to really develop a standard of excellence and high quality and the value of really trying to create a professional learning community are things that we've actualized here. The role of, of the agency, both internally and, and in terms of the city, uh, I think has been pretty profound. We have center-based programs with classrooms like this, and we have three center-based locations. You know, the teacher to, to student ratio is small enough, so they'll all get their individualized attention, and we all work collaboratively. We really take the time to get to know the child, to understand them. We provide related services only, speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and, and the like, uh, in satellite locations. We serve many, many children in their homes. So a huge part of what we do is help the family dynamic. A lot of our home providers will work with the parents just as much as they'll work with the children. That's the point, to work with the family, not only with the child. And it's interesting when you become part of that process, you know, helping the child to develop those skills right. and integrating the family into this process. We serve children in their regular education preschools where we provide a special education teacher to work with their regular education teacher. They also provide uh, outstanding service providers when it comes to speech therapy, occupational therapy, special education inclusion teachers. We have uh, relationships right now with about 65 preschools. They do a really outstanding job having professional qualified staff members. Wherever there are children who have developmental challenges in the birth to eight year old range, 
we want to be available to provide services. What number? Two. Two. So let's help me count the peanuts. You ready? One. One. Two. Two. Okay. Recent research has demonstrated the critical importance of the early years and early relationships on children's ability to learn, on their ability to relate to others, and on their sensory processing. We've actually discovered that children with different early experiences, those who are exposed to toxic stress or to trauma, versus those who are in primary uh, nurturing relationships, actually have different brain architecture and different brain scans. So we've recognized that those early years are really critical in terms of setting a foundation for all other development. The New York Center is actually helping us transform how primary care is delivered. Um, it's helping us by including these psychologists onto the primary care team and most importantly it's transforming what primary care providers expect from a team. New York Center was very privileged seven years ago to be awarded a grant that was very competitive in the city to address early childhood mental health needs. So we have become very involved in the area of identifying children early, and we work in numerous settings. In preschool disabled programs, special education programs, pediatric and well baby and family based clinics, to, to really understand that infant and early childhood mental health and family mental health cannot be separated from our total thinking about healthy development of infants, children, and families. We're at Metropolitan Hospital, which is one of the large city hospitals where we are also in their pediatric practice and also in two other federally qualified health centers, Institute for Family Health and Urban Health Plan. You couldn't ask for better people. Um, the zero to five really is a very specialized service. We work with Weill Cornell, uh, New York Presbyterian, where Dr. Frank, the head of pediatrics, has helped spearhead our mental health grant there. Our collaboration with the New York Center has been nothing short of revolutionary for our practice. And this is a, a collaboration where the psychologists are embedded in our practice. They're part of our practice. I love working with the staff and the families at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Weill Cornell. The psychologists from the New York Center um, are three of some of the most gifted practitioners I've ever met. They love having us and we love being there. The pediatric residents in the practice and the attendings are frequently approaching me to talk about how valuable the presence of the New York Center psychologists is in the practice. Everyone is just thrilled to really be at the forefront of integrating mental health into pediatric primary care. Clearly this is an unmet need and the parents feel it and they feel a tremendous sense of relief when they actually have someone to talk to about some of the issues that are troubling them. They've created a model that um, is showing tremendous results at each of its sites and are hoping to become a national, nationally recognized model, as it should be. Although our primary objective is the families, we recognize it's the staff, it's the quality of the staff, it's the training of the staff, it's the loyalty of the staff. The teachers here uh, are terrific. They're very devoted, they're very patient. I think they're very mature in, in their expectations. What the New York Center has a commitment to in terms of pr investing in professional development, investing in being certain that the key personnel who form the relationships with children and families and with other systems of care are well trained, are well educated, are aware of the cutting edge knowledge. I find that incredibly rare in organizations. There's a real strong sense of learning community here and a real emphasis on professional development. Staff development here um, is very central and there's a very um, profound commitment to it. We've got a professional advisory board made up of leading experts in fields of psychology and special education, occupational therapy, and they help guide and direct our work. I'm one of them and I'm privileged to be here. That We are steeped in academic work. We are very knowledgeable about what theory and, and research is telling us and we try to bring that, those sensibilities uh, to the work that we do here. It's a very exciting place to work uh, at every level, you know, personally, professionally, intellectually. Um, 
it doesn't have hardening of the arteries. It's very much alive. New York Center takes really great care into the initial assessment, into understanding who the children are that are going to be a part of our program. We want to know who they are as a learner, we want to know their family, we want to know their story, we want to know their history, we want to know everything. The more information that we have about a child, the better we feel that we can work with them. Play, of course, is what children do. I mean, it is the, it's the way they learn. It's the way they start to be in the world, collect information. And what's beautiful about it is that all the areas of, of development get addressed at once. I mean, you know, when children are playing, they're, they're, they're moving, they're thinking, they're discovering, they're talking, they're relating, they're regulating. So it's, it's the natural way uh, mm -hmm. to really address the whole child. There's no doubt in my mind that it was this center, this school, that prepared him to be in public school. New York Center was able to work with Taylor and get him to calm down and give him ways of dealing with when he feels emotional so that he could actually learn and be a student in class. So I'm very grateful. Good job. All right. Show me three. Everybody has three fingers? All right. Let's start. Ready? Three. They give therapy to the kids, and I think they give a little bit therapy to the parents too because we don't know how to deal with those issues unless they tell us how to do so. The school's very open and welcoming about parents who want to come and, and, and see and, and learn from, from the therapists. This is one of the best places to bring a child with problems like my son or more severe problems than my son had, and I think, yeah, definitely. And I will keep recommending the center for anybody that I see that has the same problems or close to the problems that I was having with my child. Yeah. We feel that the quality of the school is irreplaceable. We can't find another school like this. The center has become a critical organization in New York City and extending beyond. I'm very proud of the way that we've not only served families and children, but beyond that also shaped the larger practice in the city in terms of some of the work that we're doing. I think New York Center has been a model and is a model for other organizations that really want to do this work well. This school, he loves the school. And we watch and see the progress the school's made with him. Uh, you know, by the benchmarks, he's starting to speak, he's starting, you know, to have a better sense of himself, he's starting to integrate and to play with other children. Those are all wonderful things. But I think the reason that school is able to have that kind of impact in his life is because they do it in an environment that, uh, that, that he finds supporting and, and gratifying, and he's very happy here. I got the best story, and probably this one, my, my tears are going to come over, they always do every time. When we started with, on the center, the first thing that they asked parents is, what, what are your goals? What, do you, what are you expecting your child to achieve while your child is here? So I always told all the teachers and therapists, and I say, I want to be able to hug my son. To hug him, yes. When he was like, I would say, three years old, one, I told you the tears are going to come out. One of the teachers called me. And she say, Marlene, you always say that you want your son to give you a hug. He never, I hug him, but he never come to me. He didn't like to be touched by nobody. So she say, when, when he gets home today from school, ask him to give you a hug. When he went home and I say, Ethan, can I have a hug? He opened his hands and gave me a hug and believe me, that was like unbelievable. But that's a, yes, sorry. That's the, the biggest experience that I had, like being able to get a hug from myself. That was the best.